Hey everybody, this is Cory Champion. In this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth world edit tutorial from the perspective of a Minecraft city builder of over 8 years. What I have around me are some examples of stuff that we're going to eventually be able to do with the commands that I'm going to show you. You see we have this curved road up here, I'm going to show you to do that, I'm going to show you to make long stretches of road like that fairly easily, as well as being able to make skyscrapers that literally reach up to the ceiling. I, I made it go up to world height. There's also some stuff over here, like terraforming that we're going to go over, so it's going to be a lot of fun, there's going to be a lot of commands. I'm going to make timestamps in the video in case you just need a certain command, or in case you get lost and you need to rewatch something, so stick around for that the first command you're going to want to do before you do anything world edit wise is the slash slash wand command that's going to give you your wooden axe in some versions you can just grab the wooden axe from your invent uh, from your creative inventory others you actually have to do the command to assign it so you can do the command in any version so i would just play it safe and just do the command the first time you load up a world and use world edit let's talk about how we select things so let's say we wanted to select the ground and turn it into something you're going to left click with the first corner. So you see where it says first position. You're left clicking. Next corner, let's see we want it to stop. We want the selection to stop like over here. We're going to right click. And you're going to see, well I guess you can't really see, but you'll find out in a little bit that it just selected this whole kind of rectangle right here. If you want your selection to go up into the air, but the other corner is an air block essentially, Let's say you wanted it to go up to here, and you wanted to make a taller rectangular prism. Well, rather than having to pillar up, you could just use this command called slash up. So this is the first command besides the wand command I'm teaching. Slash up. And you can put a block type you want, but if you don't put a block type, it's just going to make it glass. And then you just got to put how far up are you going? We just want to go up by one block. We just want it to be placed one beneath us. Here you go. So make sure to have that one right there to make it more accurate. If you do like up 12 or up 10, it's going to make a pillar of like 12 or 10 glass and it's going to make you go up high in the sky. So you don't want that. Now we can just select this. Now we can keep this or we don't have to keep this. For right now, we're not going to keep this because otherwise it would be added into our build if we wanted to do copy and pasting. Now that we have something selected, we can turn it into a block, because right now it's just a bunch of smooth sandstone and air. So how about we turn it into... Let's say, and notice how I'm using... Oh, not sedet, it's just slash set. S-E-T, we're setting the block to something. That's how we remember it. Let's set it to red wool. Just a heads up, this is very important, depending on the version you use. Uh, in 1.12 and prior, it's best not to use the whole word and to use their legacy IDs. Now there is a way to grab the legacy ID of any block, including modded blocks. And we'll go over that in just a second because I also want to go over how you would do different block variants with newer versions. So let's say we want to set this as a stone brick slab, but we just want the top slab. So we're gonna do slash slash set. We're gonna do our stone brick slab. And now what you want to do to be able to access the variance of the block is you type in the left square bracket. It needs to be the square bracket. And then you have two options already. You could change the type or you can change if it's going to be waterlogged or not. You could do both. If we want to do both, we can. Let's just do type. And then now we also have three options. We can do the bottom option. We can do the double option, which is just a double slab. So essentially a full block, but just made out of slabs. And then the top. We wanted to do top. And then you know what? Let's also make it waterlogged. So rather than doing this and starting a new one, that's not going to work. We need to just separate it with a comma. And then we'll end the bracket at the end after this. And heck, we could just press tab because we already want it to be waterlogged as true, right? So let's just press the tab button and it's going to fill it out for us. And if you wanted it to be false, just press tab again. You can switch between the two and it goes down the list, but we want it to be true. Now that we've made all the variant options that we wanted, now we can close the square bracket. And yeah, I'm not really sure what I was thinking about doing that, but it's waterlogged. Okay, now we're in the modded world because I wanted to show you how the IDs actually worked in the modded 1.12 world. And you're going to grab a stick. You're going to want to do this command called slash info. 
I technically already bounded it, but we'll do it again. And then you can right-click any block. And it's going to tell you its ID. You see how it's 98? And the way how you would type it is, let's say you wanted to set something as stone brick. You do slash set 98. And then you do a colon if it has a variant. And the variant number would be right here. You could do 98 colon 0 here. Since the variant is 0, you don't need to. That's the default. But let's say... I, I had somewhere selected. I think it was around this tree, yeah. Let's say you wanted to do this park bunch. See how it's 258 and then it's 1? If we set this as just 258, it's not going to be the same thing. It's going to be whatever the heck that is. So we got to do 1. Okay, maybe maybe BiblioCraft is different, but like, that's essentially what it does. For any modded non-furniture block or non-chisels block. I, I tried chisels. They're, these ones are all not it. You can also use that same info command in vanilla in any version from what I believe. So we just grabbed ourselves a stick. We got to do slash info to assign that tool. I just realized you could technically use any tool for the info tool. You could use a wooden axe. That's actually the one you can't use. You can use a golden shovel and you can assign this one as well if you want. Just I don't think the stick will. I guess both of them will do it. Uh, but when you're assigning tools like that, you cannot use placeable items or placeable blocks. It's got to be something that you can't place. So not even string. Not even a zombie head. I don't know why you'd use that, though. Apologies. I don't know why I sound so congested. I promise you I'm not sick. We're going to move on to the next part. We're going to talk about lists. So let's say you have another selection. Let's just select the floor again. Uh, let's say that you don't want it to just be one block. You want it to be both red wool and blue wool. So you're going to do slash slash. You're going to do set. You're going to do red wool. And then you're going to separate with a comma. Not a space. A comma. No spaces. There we go. It's nice and beautiful. But like, what if you wanted it to have more blue wool than red wool? Well, we can add on another thing. We're going to add on percents. So let's say we wanted this to be 90% blue and 10% red. So let's do this. Slash slash set. We're going to do the percent first. So 90% blue wool. Notice how there's no spaces, no commas. You literally just put the percent symbol. Then you do the word. Nothing in between. Then you do a comma. Then you got to do this whole thing again. The remaining percent, you're using 100 as a total, which you need to, is Red Bull. Make sure that your percents add up to 100. It will do stuff. Like, it won't crash your game if the percents don't add up to 100. But it's not going to be accurate to the ratios you probably want. There could be some sort of algorithm to do what you want with having the percents not add up to 100, but it, it gets weird. So I would play it safe, have all your percents add up to 100. 90 plus 10 equals 100. We're going to press enter. Now it's barely any red wool. It's mostly blue wool. So that's how you do that. So we just went over all of the slash slash set stuff. A lot of the syntax that we just used, like the MBT data, how we did the uh, variance of blocks, that's what I mean by that, as well as the percents and how we list things, that is all also applied into a ton of other world edit commands. So if you have any questions on how you use that kind of syntax, just go back to this part of the video. Okay, I just found this block randomly spawned right here, and I really, really want it to be... Mm, let's say gray wool instead of yellow wool. I don't think the yellow wool really fits the vibe. So there's a command for that. I'm going to select it. Select one bottom vertice there. And then the top vertice there. Remember that like if it kind of went up in the air like this. Like that. And you wanted to grab this part too. You can just do the slash up command. Slash up one. That's what I did. You just right click it. Get rid of the glass. I know I just added it in there. We're doing the slash slash replace command. We want to replace the cyan wool. No, we don't. We want to replace the yellow wool with gray wool. So we're going to use a command called replace. So slash slash replace. We're going to do the block that we want to be replaced first. So we want to replace just the yellow wool. And since we need to be able to differentiate what block is being replaced and what's the new block. We do need to have a space now because this is a different parameter. 
We're not saying that we're replacing both yellow wool and gray wool. We want to replace the yellow wool with gray wool. So now we put our gray wool. And it's going to be spelled differently depending on which country you're in. And you're going to see it only replaced the yellow wool. Now also, like I was saying earlier, the whole list function applies to this. Let's say you wanted to replace both the cyan wool and the gray wool. You see how I use the, com uh, use the comma there, but there's a space here because it's a different parameter because this is what I'm replacing it with. Let's say we want to replace them with just red wool. We have all of it red wool. Now there's also a shortcut that you can use. I'm going to show that as well. Let's say that we wanted to just replace all of this with the black, but you see how it's not like just a cube that we selected. Like there's this little part up here. And if we were to set it to red wool, it just does the whole thing there, but we just want the shape to be red wool. Now, rather than doing what we just did, especially if your composition of whatever is a ton of blocks, rather than having to list every single one of them, you could just slash slash replace and don't even list the blocks you want to be replaced. Just set the block that you want it to be turned into, and then it's going to turn every single block that is an air into that block. So we want to turn it into red wool and all of its red wool. The percent thing also applies. So let's say we just wanted to turn this red wool. Let's replace the red wool. See how I'm doing the block that we're going to replace first. Replace red wool. Let's say I wanted to turn it into mostly yellow wool, but maybe a little bit of blue wool. Let's just do those percents again. Let's do like 85% yellow wool. 15% blue wool. There we go. This next command we're going to do, a lot of people have said that they didn't even know it existed. It is a very helpful command, especially with cities. And we're going to show it with skyscrapers. That's how I was able to make this. And we're also going to show it with roads. That's how I made the straight road over here. So please listen carefully on this. We're going to want to select this building. Um, notice how these trap doors kind of bleed out a little bit. So we're just going to place this here instead of selecting it like that. Just so it encapsulates everything that we need. I think I just made up a word. And then we're going to want to do the same here. I would do slash up, but I this is such a small thing to build off of that I personally don't think it's necessary in that case. Unless we were like super far up. Right. Let's do our slash slash stack command. There's mobs in there. Let's say we wanted this skyscraper to be four stories tall. We're going to do slash slash stack. So that's a new command. Slash slash stack. Notice how most of these commands have double slashes. Only a couple of them do not have double slashes. And we'll go over those once they come around. But most of them, if not pretty much all of them, use a double slash. And that's for in case if there's any other mods that have similar command names and these commands can still exist within them i think that's why i'm saying that confidently but i do not know for sure at all actually we're gonna want to stack this up right because like skyscrapers go up in the sky don't stack it north north just look up on a map you're gonna want to stack it up and you're going to want to well we said four stories right so we already have the first story so we just need three more going up right I did it backwards. You want to do stack the number, then direction. It tries to trick you, and it wants you to type the direction first. I don't know why it does that. It likes to throw you off. That's what it did with me. It threw me off. So if it's giving you an error, you probably just mixed up the number and the direction. So make sure that you have your number first, then your direction. I guess technically the command title, then the number, then the direction. And we just stacked the three up. Now it's four stories tall. So that's a little skyscraper. Now you could get really creative with the stack command. And let's say you wanted to make a road and it had a pattern because it had a lane divider, but it was a passing lane. I don't know if you know what any of that means, but you'll see what I mean. Let's say we wanted to make a road. And we wanted to go on for a long while. Uh oh.
Sorry. Never happened before. We're gonna forget that happened. We're going to make one little sequence of a road because we're gonna want to stack it a certain direction. It's gonna be seven wide. We're gonna have it look like this. We want our sequence to go three yellow, two black, and then it's gonna repeat going either this way or this way. So what we're gonna wanna do, notice how I indented it into the road. That's just a personal thing. I like to have curbs if I wanna make them. Heck, we can make a curb if we want to. Uh, let's just use andesite stairs. So like that. Personally, I think it just gives more depth to the road. And especially if it's in a city, it doesn't look as flat. So notice how, because this goes one down, and when we did the corner thing, I had to break this real quick so I could select this bottom corner. This is technically the bottom vertice of this structure here. And then this would be the top. Now, let's say we wanted this to continue going south. Well, we just made one sequence and we know that it's just gonna be a repeating pattern, right? So if it's a repeating pattern, and we know that when we use the stack command, we repeat the same structure going a certain direction. Well, we just want it to go the same direction south. So let's say we wanted this sequence to happen 19 more times going south. So we're going to do slash slash stack. Then the number, even though it tries to throw you off, we do the number. We want it to go 19 more times south. So we have a total of 20. So we do the number and then we do the direction. And look, we just made a road. I've seen a lot of people use the copy paste command for this and just having to do that every single freaking time. And I, the, I'm so glad that I realized this uh, because I also used to do that. And this has made my building life so much easier. Sometimes I'll like stack something indefinitely just because I know I want the road to go on forever. And I will find new chunks of something that I've technically placed with a world edit command, but I've never been to. And it's really funny. Just also be really careful with the stack command because if you do it too much, it can crash your game. Let's say if I wanted to stack this like 8,000 that way, it would probably crash my game. So just be really careful with that. Next big command we're going to do is the copy command and the paste command. There's also a cut command. The copy and paste command is pretty self-explanatory on what you would use them for, as well as the cut command. So I'm not even going to go over the cut command because it works the same way how you would cut text or cut an image or anything like that. But I am going to show you copy and paste because there's one part of it that's extremely important that a lot of people don't realize. I have just planted the most beautiful cherry tree and it instantly grew with some magical bone meal. And what we want to do is we want to be able to make another one. We want it to look exactly like this. So we need to select this first, right? Before we even think about copying or pasting it. So let's go ahead and select the vertices. We have this vertice right there. I'm just using grass block because I'm just going to get rid of it anyways. And then since we're going to be pretty tall, I don't want to have to pillar up. So we can use our slash up command now. Oh, notice how I accidentally typed the wrong number. No, I didn't. I thought I typed up too. When I do up to, you see how it made me go even further up? All right. We have both of our vertices selected. So this tree is now selected. We need to go up to a certain reference point. I always like to, when I copy and paste trees, I always like to go up to the trunk. You're gonna see why. This is hard to understand, so please listen. When you copy and paste something, it's going to paste at the same proximity from you as where you were when you initially copied it. So you see how we are just one block technically north of the trunk. The trunk is one block south of us. When we do slash slash copy, and then when we paste it, that tree, the new tree, is now going to be also one block south of us, or will be one block north of its trunk. There's been so many times where I did not get that at first, and I would be like, why the heck did it pace this way? Why is it so far away from me? Because I would just assume that, like, it would just...
paste at the corner of where I was at because I was so used to structure blocks, but it does not work that way. So I just really wanted to show you that. There's also other stuff that we can do. Um, we can talk about the rotate command. We can talk about the flip command. When you use the rotate and flip command, it does not matter where you are from the tree when you use those commands. The only time that it matters where you are from the structure is when you're copying and when you're pasting. But let's say we wanted to copy this again, right? We're going to stand one south of the tree of the trunk again. We're going to copy it. Uh, we want to rotate it. Let's say we want it to rotate clockwise. So when we rotate clockwise, we're going to be rotating by a positive number. When we're rotating counterclockwise, we're going to be rotating by a negative number. So we copied it already, I think. Yeah. Now we're going to want to do slash slash rotate. You're going to want to do 90 because we wanted to do a perfect right angle turn, which is 90 degrees. And then you're going to also want to do zero and zero. Now, this is because we're only moving it on the first axis. These two would be for other axes. Um, it would turn a different way if you had these as values. And we're not going to go over those because we don't really use those that often. You can. You can experiment with them and see which axes they turn on. But for right now, we don't even really need to worry about them. So we're just going to rotate it. Notice how I'm kind of far from the tree. It doesn't matter where I am when I rotate, only when I copy and paste. And then we're going to paste it right here. And you see how now rather than the tree pasting one block uh, south of me, it decided to paste one block west of me because we rotated it. When you start north, or I'm sorry, when you start south, and you rotate 90 degrees, you end up on west. So it works that way. Now let's say we wanted to use the flip command. When we flip it, we can also have it flip on different directions. So let's say we wanted to paste behind me. Uh, well, I know that I'm facing south right now. So we want to flip it to go on the north side, right? And I'll move a little bit back so it doesn't overwrite the original tree. We're going to want to do slash flip. And then we have a list of directions. We want it to flip north, right? Because that's the opposite of south. You can also do flip forward, flip backward. Those ones depend on how you're standing, though. I tend not to use those ones because I'm flying all over the place. And I just like to have these fixed directions that don't really, um, that don't really rely on where you stand. So we're going to flip north. And then we're going to paste it. And you see, since it went to the north direction, the trunk is now one north of me. Now, if I wanted to do flip west, it's not going to paste west of me. You're going to see that. And that's because, since this is west, when it did its reflection, it reflected on here. You're going to see. It's still going to paste one south of me, but it's mirrored. This is now this. That is now that. It flipped west. We're about to get into some really long and still really fun stuff. We're going to start to talk about the brush command. That's not what I wanted to use. We wanted to use, let's, let's use a die and I'll show you why. That rhymes bars. Right. The brush command. The brush command is one of the only commands in which you don't need to have a double slash, but you can if you want. I guess slash up is one that you have to use a single slash for, but I don't know why they did that. We can use a single slash or a double slash. It's gonna do the exact same thing. Just to keep consistency, uh, we're gonna use the double slash. That's just what I always use. It just helped me memorize it easier or whatnot. Memory mode, whatever it's called. Slash slash brush. And we have a bunch of options. Right, before we use this though, we have to assign a brush to an item. We're going to assign it to a cyan die. It works the same way as the info command, where you can't assign it to something that can be placed. So no blocks, no just placeable items, not even string. You can play string. So slash brush. 
and we want to do some terraforming. So we're going to create some spheres. So we're going to do slash slash brush and we're going to go to sphere. We'll type sphere. Before we do sphere, actually, I just wanted to go over the ones that we will be going over today. So we have a uh, clipboard. We'll talk about clipboard. Cylinder is the same thing as sphere. It just makes a cylinder instead of a sphere. So we won't go over it. Um, some of these are pretty self-explanatory, like extinguish, like wherever you, wherever you right click with the brush, it's going to extinguish a fire if it's there. Forest is just going to spawn trees. Uh, gravity and height map and lower, those ones are kind of advanced. We're not going to go over those. Uh, never done none. Paint, you can do paint. We're not going to go over it because I have a special way in how I paint. Raise is kind of complex. Set is kind of useless in my opinion we're gonna go over the smooth command snow is kind of self-explanatory it just makes it wintry and then the sphere is the one that we want so we're gonna do slash slash brush space fear so the command type then the shape or whatever you're doing with the brush now we want to type in the block that we want the brush sphere to be so we're going to let's let's use our percents back let's take a percents back we want it to be 60 percent I don't know, orange wool? I keep using wool. Let's use concrete, let's break it up. And 40%. And you could do as many items in a list as you want. Like if you want to do like 100 blocks and have each of them be like 1%, or have of them, or have some of them be decimal percents, so you can do that as well. Just, I don't think you can do fractions though, I don't know. So I would do decimals, but we're getting off topic. Uh, 40% blue concrete. Not oncrete, concrete. There we go. Um, and now, uh, we have to type in the radius since we're doing a sphere. A sphere has a radius. We want our radius to be three wide. And when our radius is three wide, the actual width of our sphere, the diameter is actually going to be seven rather than six because it's a radius of three. And then there's also an extra block in the center of the sphere. Your spheres are always going to be odd numbers in width. So are your cylinders. So, now we can, whee! You just right click. See how it's kind of dug in the ground a little bit? It just does that. Heck, we can terraform a mountain. Let's terraform a mountain. Heck, let's actually change our uh, radius to like six. Just so we can make some larger spheres. So this mountain doesn't take as long. This is the weirdest mountain I've ever seen when it comes to color. I know we're starting to get in the way of our curved road. I didn't really mean to be back over here, but that's fine. And our mountain is kind of like, Sphery, right? Heck, there's like also some stuff now that's floating in the air that I totally didn't just do on purpose. So we're gonna grab another tool. We're gonna use light blue wool. We're gonna use that brush smooth command that I talked about earlier. So slash slash brush smooth. And now we need to assign the radius. I always try to do a radius of five with smoothing. And now we also want to do the amplitude. So this means like what's the intensity that we want to smooth it by do we want to barely smooth it or do we want to like really smooth it like the second we hit it like it instantly just becomes dome or whatever and i always try to go for that like i like it as smooth as i want and it doesn't take as long when i have the intensity up higher so the highest intensity you can do without changing anything in the properties file is 10. same for the uh brush radius is usually five it might be more actually i don't know Used to be just five, I think. So, brush smooth, five, ten. And we're gonna smooth it. You see how some of the sandstone gets kind of involved in there? That's just part of the process. You can use some certain commands to make it that it doesn't do that, kind of. Or it doesn't get rid of old sandstone. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But the easiest thing you can do is when you're doing terraforming like this, Always, always do your terraforming before you do any buildings or anything like that or any trees because they will get affected. Look, oh no, the trees are affected and they're toxic waste now, I guess. I don't know. All right, we're almost done smoothing this. See how it kind of made a smooth mountain? Um, There's actually an easier way how you can do terraforming and you just make your brush falling sand and you're never even going to worry about blocks floating like that. And you can still smooth it out, but it's going to look much na much more natural. So let's actually change the composition of our brush. So rather than it being this handful, we're just going to make it sand. Oh, 
that's I wanted that to be smooth. We gotta go back to our sign wall. There we go. Here's our falling sand. You can see how it oh oh goodness. Okay. Maybe I don't do that as much. But you see how like when we have it float off in the air like that. As much as it likes to crash my game, it kind of makes it look a little bit more natural. If it can still smooth it here and there. So we'll do that. I don't know. That looks kind of good. We're going to move on to the next part of this, which is masking. Um, mm, no, we're not. We are actually going to talk about the brush clipboard first. So the brush clipboard is kind of affiliated with copying. And I use the, br I use the brush clipboard uh, all the time when it comes to making my own custom forests or if I just need trees of the same type being placed everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna select this cherry tree again. Up one, we're gonna copy it. This time though, we're going to dig one into the ground. And please, please do this. Otherwise, when you use the brush command, it's going to be sunken into the ground by one. I don't know why it does it. It does it, though. We're going to want to grab another tool, right? Uh, for when we eventually make a clipboard. Let's use magenta dye. We'll keep it right there for now. We want to do slash copy. Now, here's an additional part. You're going to want to do minus, which gives some other parameters. M. And technically, we don't have to do this this time because we didn't keep our glass blocks there. But if we wanted to keep our glass blocks, remember those glass blocks that we saw from the up command? This dash minus means mask. So it's saying, all right, this next part is going to involve some sort of block. Masking means you can only change this block. You will only see this block even. But we want to copy every single thing from this build except for glass so rather than doing copy dash m glass we need to do copy dash m exclamation mark glass the exclamation mark means everything but so we are copying everything but the glass and i know that we didn't use glass this time but you're going to probably have a separate area where you have a bunch of tree schematics and you're going to want to keep that glass there in the corners so you won't have to keep doing slash up all the time or having to place the block in the first corner all the time. It's just nicer that way. And when you copy it and mask it to be everything but glass, you can keep those glass blocks there in the original, in the original stencil and then they won't show up when you keep pasting it. Right. Now we want to assign it to a clipboard, right? Also remember that when we do the copy command, wherever we're standing does matter, but not when we're doing this brush clipboard command. We're going to want to do slash brush, or slash slash brush if you want. Doesn't matter, I guess. Then we're using clipboard. What this is doing is it's assigning whatever we have copied in the clipboard onto our magenta die currently, since that's what we're holding. It's going to make it a brush. Now we want to do dash a O. What dash A O does is when we start clicking it, wherever we click is going to simulate where we would have been standing. So you see how we were standing one south from the trunk or one north from the trunk? Wherever we click, it's going to say, oh, wherever you clicked is supposed to be one north of the trunk of this tree. And then the O thing, um, makes it that when you paste it its proximity is not from the center of the build it's from exactly where you were standing it's kind of kind of really don't know this well i just know to do this so when you're wanting to do brush clipboards of schematics and you're brushing them around like trees you want to do that dash ao otherwise it's going to be weird i can show you what happens oh ha huh. well that's fun Let's say that we wanted to... That's something I have to edit the properties file. Let's say we just want to do this little one part. This one little part. And heck, you know what? We can use glass. Let's take advantage of this. Let's use the glass. 
And we're going to keep the glass there. We just want the first part of the tree. We're going to still copy it here. We're going to do our slash copy. And then... Mask it. So it's everything but glass. Then we're going to want to do our slash slash brush clipboard and then the dash AO. Now we're good. One more thing that you want to do. We're going to do a command called G mask. That stands for global mask. What that's going to do is it means for any world edit command, whatever things you list to be masked will be masked no matter what. No matter what command, even if you don't include any masking in the command, this overrides it. Unless otherwise. It just adds to the masking list, I guess. It doesn't necessarily override it, it adds to the masking list. So we're going to do slash slash G mask. And we want to do just air. The only thing we want to be changed is air. So once we start placing along that hill, we don't want any leaves replacing the sand blocks or the concrete blocks or the wool blocks. If they start digging into that hill, those concrete blocks and all that will have priority. The leaves will just not be there. And this is perfect for when you make a building and you want to have some trees that are really close to it, but you don't accidentally want the leaves to replace it. That also goes for the air blocks. Technically, when we copied this, we didn't just copy the tree. We copied the air as well. Heck, technically what you could do... You know what? I'm dumb. When we did the dash A... You remember when we did dash AO? The O part is so it, when we paste it, it doesn't sink in the ground. The dash A part means that it copied everything except for the air. That's just a little shortcut. And I, you don't have to do both the dash A as well as G masking air, but I just do that for a safety, uh, for a safety precaution. All right now I can start right clicking. See if we have our little cherry trees along the hill. Let's say that we wanted to be, we wanted to have one like right up to the mountain, like this, Oop. or like this. You see how if you look in there, the wool and stuff is still there, the concrete's still there, the leaves did not take priority. Same for the sand. Like you can see it better with this one. So that's that command. The next two commands we're gonna do are kind of simple. I just kind of added them. In, I just kind of added them in here, uh, just kind of off the whim, just because they're nice to know. That is the slash slash sphere command and the slash slash cylinder command. And I know you might be thinking, but we just talked about those in a brush. I'm talking about when you use them not in a brush. When you just want to place one. So let's do the slash slash cylinder command. We want to do a cylinder. We want it to be blue wool. And we want its radius to be three. Notice how it didn't make it beneath us. It made it in the first block of our height. So we're kind of sunk into it. Also, notice how it's seven long. Here's a radius of three, a center block, and then the other radius of three. If you add another parameter, like five, now it's going to be five tall. I should talk about ascend. Ascend makes you just go up a level. Descend makes you go down a level. And then slash through makes you go through something. So let's say I was here. Oh, this wall's too thick for it to work. But let's say you had like a one thick or two thick block wall. Um, you just use the slash T-H-R-U. Not T-H-R-O-U-G-H. T-H-R-U. I don't think it's... Yeah, that doesn't even work. It's got to be slash through. And then you go through it if it's a thin wall. You see how it made it five tall? It's because I made it five tall. Same thing happens with the cylinder. We're not the cylinder, with the sphere. Ooh, if I can spell. Uh, we want to do slash slash sphere, and then let's make it red wool, and then we make the radius three. And it's going to be seven tall, although it is dug in the ground, so the bottom half of the sphere is below the ground because of where you're standing. And it's three tall. Um, you might be able to change the height. I've never really tried that. Nope. You can only do the radii. Because a, is a, a sphere is a sphere. It's not an ellipsoid or whatever it's called. It's a sphere. Cylinders can be however tall they want to be. 
Alright, this is the moment you've been waiting for. The next commands that we are going to be using is going to eventually lead us to be able to make a road like this without having to do any manual building. All of this road was done with world edit commands. I did not place down a single block. And we're going to get up to there. This is with the different selection types. So this whole time, the selection type we were using is called cuboid. When you want to select a cuboid, like a rectangular prism, you just select the two opposite vertices. So like this, and this. And we just selected a cuboid. This cuboid, or prism, is what's selected. We're going to go into different selection types now. If you do slash slash cell, there's a whole list of them. We're only going to talk about a few. We're going to talk about uh, convex. And that's kind of it. Um, we already technically talked about cuboid. But we're going to talk about going into convex mode. And that's going to make some really interesting uh, different selection types. So we're going to do slash slash cell. That's short, for, that's short for select. You can't do select. It's got to be cell. Convex. Now, rather than us only being able to select two points, we can select multiple points. So let's say we wanted to do this. Here's our starting point. We left click to start a new selection. Then we right click to add new points, new vertexes, new vertices, I mean. You can do up to a maximum of 21 without changing the properties file. And you're going to notice if I left click again, it's going to start it all over. So only only left click for your first vertice and then right click for the rest. Maybe we want the next one to go up in the air a little bit. So I guess we'll pillar up instead of doing the slash up because I'm lazy. And then maybe we want it to go back down again. And then that's it. Now let's actually we have to undo our G mask. Otherwise, it's going to only replace the air. So when you want to when you want to reset your global mask, which means you don't want to be masking anything, you just do slash slash G mask without anything after it. It's going to disable it, All right? We want to set this as orange wool. Look how weird that looks. You can make weird shapes like this. And yeah, this makes sense because we selected all of these edges right here and then we only had one block go up so they all kind of they all kind of culminated up to that one block and it actually connects itself at the end you don't have to end your selection back to the first vertice you can if you want to but it will auto connect it for you so there you go this that's how you can make weird shapes like this now we're not going to be needing to do stuff like this for making the curved road but that's just to show you what the convex tool does. Technically, when we make this road, we can use either the convex option or we can use the poly option. We're going to use the poly option because that's usually what I end up using. I only used convex for here because poly is meant for flat surfaces. I might be tripping right now. I might want to use convex. We're going to use convex. It works for either or. I don't even know why I said what I said. We're just going to use convex to be safe. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a command called the curve command. So let's talk about this curve command. That's how I was able to make curved lines like this, a curved line like that. I'm going to show you how it works. So it's the same way as how we do uh, that selection stuff. However, rather than it making some sort of 3D object, it's just going to make a line to connect all our, our points. But it's going to be a curve line. It's going to be a steady curve line. So let's say we want to go here. And maybe we want to like quickly go like that. Oh no. And then it ends right there. And we're going to do slash slash curve. And then we want to do the material. So let's make it pink wool. And then, if you want to, you can even give it a radius. Give it a radius of three. And rather than it being a flat radius, it's going to be a 3D radius, like the radius of a sphere. Now, there's ways how you can make it that it is just flat. You could 
globally mask everything except for the air so it doesn't go in the air and I'll show that. You see how I made like a curved line? Oh, I know what this looks like. And like that. Now let's say we want it to be flat. We can globally mask everything except for air, which means the only stuff that's getting replaced are blocks that are not air. So exclamation mark air, because that means everything but air. Now let's do that same command again. Now it's completely flat. Look at that. Heck, if we wanted to have an extra line in the middle, and we wanted, um, I can actually show that in a little bit. In fact, I'll show that when we do the roads, because it's essentially going to do the same thing as the roads. Let's make our road. Let's have it start here. It's going to curve. It's going to skeet around that. And then it's going to end right there. Now, we still have everything except for the air globally masked. I did that on purpose. So when you're doing this, you need to have that. You need to have this command set in place. The slash slash G mask exclamation mark air because you need to make sure that none of the air blocks get replaced. Right. We're going to start with the innermost part of the road, which is the lane divider, right? We're going to make our lane divider yellow. Just yellow concrete. So we're going to do slash slash curve. We're going to yellow concrete. And then we just want it to be one thick. So it's not going to have a radius at all. So you could just do zero. You could just not have any parameters after. And it's just going to do that. Now, what we want to do is actually we're going to change our mask to just be sandstone. Because otherwise, once we do this next command, you'll see we are going to do slash curve gray concrete three because each part, each lane is three wide and it would have replaced over the yellow line and we don't want that. So we need to quickly change our global mask. We're going to make it that it only replaces the sandstone because that's really the only block that we need to be replaced, right? So now that we have that. Let's do the other command again. The slash slash curve space gray concrete. And then it's going to be three wide. Because when we make something three wide as a radius, it's saying, okay, there's a center block. And then it's going three extra on each side. Our yellow is our center block. And I made it three extra wide. Like that. I know it doesn't really look like that because the roads are curved but if you look here with this one straight part it did do that now let's see we wanted to add a curb uh, we can also do that but our curb is only going to be one wide we're not going to just do we're not going to do this uh let's say we want it to be smooth stone slabs the type is bomb see how i remember these brackets yeah we're not going to do this because a when we do a radius of one, that's not even one wide. That's technically three wide and B this is starting from the center point, not from the rims. So we need to take into account every other part of the row that we just did. This is our zeroth block. One, two, three. We only want the fourth block of the radius to be affected. So instead we're going to do a radius of four and it's not going to replace any of this because we have it masked to the sandstone. Right, let's say we want to have a grass easement for the next two blocks. Well, two more than four. Oop, I meant curve. It's six. And then we have our curb. We have our, our grass. Now we want to make a sidewalk. Let's make our sidewalk, I don't know, stone. We also want that to be too wide. So two more than six is eight curve stone Oop. eight there we go now you may be wondering okay how did you get your road to be indented one of the ground like that and what we're gonna do is nothing manual again we're gonna change our selection type back to cuboid 
because the way how we have this selected is we technically don't even have the grass selected or the stone selected or any of that. Technically, the only thing that we had selected was the yellow line. If we wanted to do slash slash replace with something or slash slash set, the only thing it would have set or replaced was the yellow line. So in order for us to be able to select this whole entire row, or this whole entire road, we need to go back in the cuboid. And I know that some of this is going to be kind of affected, but it's kind of not because we're going to be masking some stuff and we're not masking pink wool, so it won't be affected. What we're going to do, and this is what I do as a shortcut, if I want this to be indented in. I don't want the whole thing being indented in. I only want the yellow wool and the gray wool to be indented in. Well, technically, we could just have this same road again exist one beneath it. So if we want just the same thing to exist right beneath it, we could just stack it. Just stack it one beneath it. So one down. And it's there. You just can't see it. It's there. And now we just want to get rid of the gray and the yellow, right? We can just do replace because we're replacing the road we're replacing the gray concrete and the yellow concrete notice how i separate them like a list with air oh you want to know why i didn't do it because the only thing that's being masked currently is the sandstone this isn't sandstone so we got to turn off our g mask now we can do it oh hold on I'm trying to think you know what? You know why I didn't do it? I know why. It's because when we only had the sandstone masked, it technically still made a bottom sphere when I was doing all of that curve stuff. I'm so used to being able to do this over grass blocks and since dirt is always beneath grass, that I never really had this issue. But what we're gonna do to fix it is now that our mask is off, we're just gonna stack this one down again. And now, now you're going to see, oh yeah, the yellow line's beneath it. We're not going to have that issue. So let's go ahead and replace this again. There we go. Beautiful curve. One thing before I end off the video, now that we're back on the cuboid version, is the line command. This is kind of like the curve command, but it's just for straight lines. But you can do diagonal lines with it. I've used it like that before. I don't think you can do a radius. You might be able to. I can try. So let's say this is our first position. This is our second position. And this could have been added in anywhere in the video. I don't know why I had it set to being last. And we're going to do slash slash line. And we're going to do, let's say, red wool. And you might be able to change the radius. Yeah, you can. Okay. There you go. I hope you enjoyed the world edit tutorial video. I know the first part was like extremely edited, but then I kind of was on a roll with everything else. So I'm going to put timestamps in case you missed anything. Um, I really hope you enjoyed. I also make my own Minecraft roleplay MCTV content. So if you want to check out either Hey Ted High School or Pokemon Osmium version, feel free. They will be in my channel as playlists. And I will see you next time in case I want to do any other tutorials. See ya!